hopefully you've been encouraged to see just what a wonderful thing it is to find our rest in Christ. And hopefully you do feel more at peace and you do feel rested knowing that everything you need in life is to be found in your relationship with God through Jesus Christ and the gospel. But it doesn't change the fact that we're still tired. A lot of us feel physically worn down or mentally exhausted. And it really prompts the question, how should we think about our physical rest? So does finding rest in Christ mean that I don't need to sleep anymore? Does finding rest in Christ mean that I can never take a vacation? or that I can't have hobbies, or that I shouldn't take a nap in the afternoon? I don't necessarily think so. I think that a lot of those things God has placed into our lives and gifted us for our enjoyment, for our blessing, for our benefit, but ultimately for his glory and for the good of others as well. And I do think that if we're gonna find rest and recreation in the other pursuits of life, that we need to have the proper perspective on how they relate to our spiritual rest. And our physical rest will be at its best and we're gonna get the most physical rest when it's grounded in and contributes to our spiritual rest. The more our physical rest and recreation glorifies God and honors him and loves others, the more restful we're gonna be. That's how I wanna close this particular lesson, to consider how our physical rest relates to our spiritual rest. And we wanna make sure that everything we're doing in our rest and recreation honors God and worships him. And I think we're gonna benefit the most from pursuing those things. Here are a few principles. The first is to recognize your physical limits. God has made us to be spiritual beings. We have immaterial souls, but he's also made us to be physical beings with bodies. And this is part of God's beautiful design for people, for humanity, the chief cornerstone of his creation. But one of the consequences of being physical beings is that we have physical limitations. The truth of the matter is, and I don't have to convince you of this, is that we get tired. We have physical parameters that we have to stay within. We get exhausted, we run out of resources, and because of that, we need rest. This is part of the way that God has designed us. We have to acknowledge that we have limits. And in order to be faithful in life, we need to have the rest that is required in order to function. Really practically, one of the simplest ways that you can honor God in your rest is to get enough sleep. Psalm 127.2 says that it is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. Sleep, according to God, is a gift. It is something that he has grants to us as people with physical limitations to allow us to be refreshed and restored. We need to see sleep as a gift and we need to pursue it that way. Sleep also humbles us. Because every night when you lay your head down in the pillow and you close your eyes and fall asleep, you can do nothing. You're literally doing nothing during those hours. And all that while, God remains sovereign. He remains the king of the universe and he is sustaining and ruling over everything apart from your help. So every time we go to sleep, it humbles us in helping us to realize that we're not God, that we have our limits, and that we ultimately rely on the one who is limitless. And sleep can help our spiritual condition. I know that my sin comes out in more pronounced ways when I'm tired. I get more grumpy. I get more impatient. I'm not able to love people as I ought to. And that doesn't mean that lack of sleep is the cause of my sin. My sin is my sin. And I'm always at fault in that. But lack of sleep and being tired does not help me in my fight against sin. And in order for me to be able to battle my selfishness and the battle of my sin well, I know I need to get enough rest in order to do that. This is a really difficult thing for some of us to achieve. Maybe you're in a season of life where you just aren't able to get a lot of sleep. Maybe you have a physical condition where it's just difficult. It's physically difficult for you to fall asleep. Maybe you're a parent with young children. But for most of us who find ourselves short on sleep, there are probably areas in life where we just need to discipline ourselves so that we can get the sleep that we need. And really simply, maybe that just means you need to turn the TV off and go to bed. It means putting your phone down and going to bed. It means working harder during the day so that when the evening comes, you don't feel like you need to burn the midnight oil to get everything done that you neglected in the middle of the day. We need to realize that we have physical limits. Second, we need to see physical rest as a stepping stone and not as a destination. My family recently got to go on a vacation and it was wonderful. 
We stayed with another family who had a beautiful home on this gorgeous lake. The food was incredible. My daughters were pampered and spoiled. We got to do some amazing things. And several times during the course of that vacation, I turned to Jamie, my wife, and I said, I could get used to this. I wouldn't mind staying here forever. And I think we've all been in those kinds of situations where a circumstance is just so restful and a vacation is so relaxing and you just wish that your entire life could be like this forever. But we have to remember that even though God does give us these seasons of physical rest, they're not meant to last forever. And they're wonderful and they're blessings and they're even needed at times, but they're stepping stones. They're not destinations. They're, men, they're merely supposed to prepare us for the next season of work. Even as we took that vacation, I was trying to be mindful of this. And my prayer throughout the course of that vacation was, Lord, thank you so much. Thank you so much for giving my family this vacation. You know that we needed it. We were exhausted and we really needed this time of rest. But God, help me to use this vacation well. Help me to see this vacation as a means to be restored so that I can get back home and get back to work so that I can do my job to the best of my ability and give you the most glory possible. One of the most satisfying feelings for me is when I fill up the gas tank of my car. That seems like such a small thing, but there really is a deep sense of gratification as I put the nozzle in and I can see the tank meter rising and you know the feeling at the end where it creeps above full and you just, you see, man, I got a full tank of gas. And to me, the feeling is one of potential. It's like I have this full tank of gas and I can go anywhere within, you know, like 300 miles, but I can go anywhere. And it would be silly if I filled up a tank of gas and the only satisfaction I had was that the tank was full and I just left the car in the driveway. No, the reason why that tank of gas is full is so that I can actually take that car on the road and go somewhere. And our physical rest is the same way. We need to fill our tank, so to speak, in being rested, but not for being rested sake. We need to be rested so we can go out and do the work that God has called us to do with more vigor and faithfulness. Third, don't neglect your responsibilities and your roles. It's okay to plan vacations. It's okay to take breaks. It's okay to have hobbies, but they should not come at the cost of fulfilling your responsibilities, of doing the things that God has clearly called you to do. Let's say that you love playing sports and that's how you unwind and that's how you blow off steam. You love going out and playing basketball and getting in a couple rounds of golf. You love watching sports. You love uh, engaging in sports. That's just the way that you react, uh, relax. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if your involvement in sports and just for your rest and relaxation is taking you away from your family to the point where you're neglecting them and you're not able to shepherd your wife or shepherd your children well, then you're not fulfilling your responsibility. And what that means is that you need to adjust the way that you're pursuing physical rest. And even though you might seem, it might seem like I need this in order to feel rested, trust that if you are pursuing the things that God wants you to do, that if you're being faithful with the roles that God has given to you, then that's where real rest is to be found. So as you're considering where am I gonna find my rest and what kind of recreation am I allowed to have be thinking, am I fulfilling the roles that God has given to me? Am I being responsible and being faithful with all the tasks that God has entrusted to me? Fourth, is to cultivate worship in the midst of your rest and recreation. It is so easy to make resting about me, to make it a selfish endeavor. It's about my desires, my preferences, my hobbies, my interests, it's about me. But just like uh, all of life is meant to be about God, so our rest and recreation also ought to be about God. He owns all of it. He owns all of our time, all of our pursuits, and that includes the ways that we pursue rest and recreation. So how is it that we can worship God as we're pursuing rest? Maybe one simple way to do that is to be thankful. James 1.17 says that every good and per every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. God is the giver of every good and perfect gift, including the opportunities for us to rest. So be thankful. Thank him explicitly for whatever it is that you're doing that gives you joy and rest and recreation. And so if you're on vacation, pray and thank God explicitly for that vacation. 
Say, God, thank you so much that you've given me this opportunity to rest. Thank you so much for the financial means to do it. Thankful for, thank you for giving me the time to be able to do it. Thank you for giving me the means and the location to be able to do it. I'm so thankful to you, God, for giving me this, me this vacation. Another way to be worshipful is to enjoy God's creation. One of the easiest ways to worship God in the midst of your rest is to see his fingerprints on everything that you're doing. Psalm 19.1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. And it's easy to think of taking a vacation to the mountains or being able to walk by the ocean and seeing the majesty of God's creation. You see the stars above, and you marvel at the fact that the, God has made everything, and it should make you worship him more because of your experience in creation. But the beauty of God's creation extends beyond mountains and oceans. God has made everything and everything you enjoy is part of God's creation. And what that means is that you can see his fingerprints on everything. One of my personal hobbies is coffee. I just love drinking coffee, drinking really great coffee. And coffee and enjoying coffee can and should be a means of worship. And here's what it looks like for me. As, as I'm drinking this cup of coffee, I'm thinking, God, it is amazing that you made me with this amazing sense of taste. That you could have made everything in the world have absolutely zero taste at all. If eating could, and drinking could just be this totally, totally bland experience. But you didn't do that. You gave me taste buds and you made me uh, a creature who's able to enjoy taste. And beyond that, you made this coffee to be amazing tasting. What a God you are. I heard a story once of a famous pastor who was having lunch with somebody and uh, he was in the middle of a conversation and took a bite of this fish and all of a sudden he just stopped, threw his hands in the air and said, praise God. He was so excited about eating the salmon. And you may not have to raise your hands and shout in the middle of a meal, but do you recognize that everything you enjoy is part of God's creation and that he has made it and it shows something great about him? King Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, There is nothing better for a person than that he should eat and drink and find enjoyment in his toil. This also I saw is from the hand of God. For apart from him, who can eat or who can have enjoyment? God has given us all of creation to enjoy. And if we're going to enjoy to the fullest, we have to see God's hand in it. And that's how we're going to find real rest and real joy in our rest and relaxation. Fifth. Make it a point to love others. God calls us to love him, but to also love others. And this has to be true in the way that we pursue our physical rest and recreation. And I'll confess that I'm often tempted to believe that I will find rest and peace if I'm away from people. That if I can just get away from challenging situations and be by myself and be alone, then that's where I'm going to be most rested. And really, honestly, one of the easiest ways for me to find rest is in the bathroom. I mean, I'll be in the bathroom at home and I'll hear my kids going nuts outside. And I'll just think to myself, if I could just get a couple more minutes in here, just close, keep the door closed and kind of keep things to myself. Oh man, that would just be the best. And that's kind of pathetic, isn't it? And I've seen rest as a means of moving away from people instead of towards them. Of course, it's okay to use the bathroom. Of course, it's okay to use the bathroom alone. And there are times when it's okay to seek solitude. But it's never okay for us to be selfish in doing so. Even as we're pursuing rest, we need to be doing so in a way that is loving others and seeking to meet the needs of others. For instance, when I'm on vacation, if I'm alone, it should be for the purpose of growing in my love for God, pursuing him and growing in my knowledge of him. It should be when I'm intimate with him in the word and pursuing him in prayer. But at other times, I need to be thinking about how I can be spending my time to love others. And really practically for me, that means that when I'm on vacation, I need to be physically present with my family. I need to be there with them and doing everything that they're doing so that I can be with them and invest in them. And I also need to be mentally present with them. I don't want to be distracted by other things and have my mind on other things. I need to be as present as possible. Another way to love people in your rest and recreation is to simply involve other people in what you're doing. 
If you love fishing, then bring someone along with you. If you love playing sports, then invest in the relationships that you have with those people that you're playing with. If you love coffee, then share the good news of specialty coffee with someone who has no idea what you're talking about. But see all the different things that you're pursuing for your rest as a way to invite people into your life so that you can love them and meet their needs. God really is the giver of every good and perfect gift. And one of the good gifts he gives to his people is that of rest. And in order to really appreciate this gift, we need to honor the giver who gives the gift. We need to make sure that everything we're doing as we pursue rest and recreation honors God, that it worships him, that we make sure that we're doing everything for his glory. And we need to make sure that even as we pursue our physical rest, that we're doing so in a way that demonstrates that our true rest, our spiritual rest is found in Christ and in Christ alone.